Everyone go to the moon. Everyone go to the moon. Everyone go to the moon. Hi guys, so this video is gonna be about quadratic inequalities and rational inequalities. So the first thing that I want to talk about is quadratic inequalities. So let's take a look at a couple of quadratic inequalities and see if we can solve them. We have now quadratic inequalities. Now a quadratic inequality looks just like a quadratic equation except for instead of having the equal sign what we have there is our inequalities. We could have a less than, we could have a less than or equal to, we could have a greater than, we could have the greater than or equal to, and these are all our inequalities. So the first example that I have on the paper is a quadratic inequality. And the first step that you want to do is replace the inequality with the equal sign and solve for x. In order for me to solve for x, I need to factor. So I'm going to do my two sets of parentheses with the x. And I need to find a number that when I multiply, I get 10. But when I add, I get negative 7. And those two numbers are going to be negative 5 and negative 2. So I put those in the parentheses and I have x equals 5 and x equals Next 2. Next step is to put these two numbers that I found on a number line. So I'm going to draw a big number line across my paper and I'm going to put 2 and I'm going to put 5. Notice I put the numbers in order that I see them on a number line. And I need to make a determination whether these values are going to be included or not. Now, if you look at the inequality, this inequality is strict. So this tells me that the values are not going to be included. And what I mean by strict is it doesn't say equal to. It's not a bar underneath the inequality. So that means I'm putting open circles at each one of my numbers. Next step is to pick a test point in each one of my intervals. The first one I pick 0, the next one I pick 3, and the last one I pick 10. And with those test points, I'm going to test them in the original inequality. So if you notice, I'm putting 0 in for all so of my So 10 x's. is greater than 0, so I say true. That means I'm going to shade that area. So let's do the same thing for 3. I'm going to put 3 wherever I see x in my inequality. And I'm going to see if it's true or false. 9 minus 21 plus 10 is greater than 0. That gives me negative 2 is greater than 0. And negative 2 is not greater than 0, so I say false. That means I do not shade Last, that area. let's check 10. So I'm going to put 10 wherever I see x. That gives me 100 minus 70 plus 10 is greater than 0, which tells me 40 is greater than 0. And that is true. So I'm going to shade Last that area. thing that we need to do for my solution is to put the areas that are shaded in interval notation. So right above the graph, I'm going to do my interval notation. Negative infinity to 2 with a parenthesis. Union with 5 to infinity. Parenthesis. And this interval notation is my solution along with the graph. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, first thing that I need to do here is replace my inequality with the equal sign and solve the equation. So in order to solve this, I need to put this in standard form. So I need to distribute this x. I'm going to distribute the x here and here. So that gives me x squared plus x equals 12. And I have to put it in standard form, so I'm going to move the 12 to the other side so I can factor. So I put two sets of parentheses with an x in each one. And I need to find a number that when I multiply, I get negative 12, but I add, I get 1. 
those two numbers are going to be 4 and negative 3. So I put 4 and negative 3 in my parentheses. And that gives me a value of x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 3. Next step is to put these numbers on a number line in order. So I'm going to put negative 4 first and 3 second. And I need to determine whether these are included. This is a strict inequality. There's no equal to. So that tells me I have open circles at each one of my numbers. Now it's time to test each interval. So I'm going to pick a test point in each interval. Negative 10, 0, and At this and point, 10. I'm just going to plug in negative 10 for each one of my x values and check it in my calculator. Now, when I put negative 10 in for the x values, I get something that's not true, so I cross it out. When I test 0, I put 0 in, I actually get something that's true, so I'm going to shade that area. And then for the last interval, I put in 10, and I get something that's not true. So my solution is just going to be the middle part, which is negative 4 to 3. Both sides will have a parenthesis. Okay, one more example. I want to do one that doesn't have a strict inequality. So, first step, I want to replace the inequality with the equal sign and solve. Putting this in standard form, I need to move the 9 to the other side, and then I need to factor. This is the difference of two squares. So I take the square root of each one of my terms, write it once with a minus sign, write it once with a plus sign. So that tells me x is equal to 3, x is equal to negative 3. Next step is to put these numbers on a number line in order. And at this point, I see an inequality that's not strict. There has an equal sign there. So what I do is I put a closed dot at each one of my numbers. Not an open dot, a closed dot. And this is because it has an equal sign. Next step is to test each one of my intervals. As you see, I picked the test point in each one of my intervals, and I'm going to test in the original inequality. The first one is not true. The second one is true. The last one is not true. So the middle part is my solution, and I put that in interval notation. Notice here I use brackets on each side, and that's because I have a closed dot. I am including those numbers, negative 3 and 3. So it's bracket, negative 3, 3, bracket. Okay, second, let's talk about rational inequality. Rational inequality. So for a rational inequality, you see an example on the paper right now. The first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure you have a single fraction on one side and zero on the other side. A single fraction. If you notice on this example, on one side, on the left hand side, I have a single fraction. x minus 3 over x plus 5. And then on the other side, I just have zero. So we know that this is set up in the correct form. Once you have it set up in that form, what you're going to do is set your numerator equal to 0, and you get x equals 3, and then you set your denominator equal to 0, and you get x is equal to negative 5. Now, the values you found from the numerator and the denominator, you put them on a number line. In this case, I just have two numbers, so I put them in order, negative 5 and positive 3. And now we're at the point where we need to figure out if we put open or closed dots at these points. Are these numbers included or do we um, put an open dot there? So according to the inequality, this is a inequality that's not strict. That means you should have a closed dot at the numbers. So the number that I found from the top is going to be a closed circle. However, the one that I found in the denominator is always going to be open regardless of what my inequality tells me.
Now, the reason that this is true is because any number that you find from the denominator, it has to automatically not be included. Because if I plug negative 5 into my equation, I'm going to get 0 in the denominator. If I do negative 5 for the x value, I get negative 5 plus 5, and that gives me 0, and you know you can't divide by 0. So regardless of what the inequality says, you're always going to have an open circle for the values that you find from your denominator. Now we are at the step where we need to test each one of our intervals. So I'm going to pick negative 10, 0, and positive 10. Now these values I'm going to plug into my calculator to see if it gives me a true statement or not. When I plug negative 10 in for all of my x values, I get something that is not true. When I plug in 0, I get something that is true. And when I plug in x equals 10 for each one of my x values, I get something that's not true. So my only solution is going to be the part in the middle. That's negative 5 to 3. Negative 5 with a parenthesis and 3 with a bracket because of the closed dot. Another example that's a little bit more complicated. So on this example, if you take a look at the inequality, I have a single fraction on one side and then I have a number on the other side. This is not set up in the correct form. So what you see me do now is subtract the 2 from both sides. And when I subtract the 2 from both sides, that leaves me 0 on the right hand side. And that's the form that I want, or is leading up into the form that I want. The only issue that I have here is that on the left-hand side, I don't have a single fraction. I have a fraction minus a number. So I have to find a way to bring those two terms together. So what I'm going to do is put the 2 over 1 to try to find the LCD. The LCD in this case is going to be 3x minus 5. So if you notice here, I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by 3x minus 5. And what this is going to do is it's going to create two fractions with the same denominator so I can bring them together. So I'm going to distribute the 2, that's going to give me 6x minus 10, and in the denominator I have 3x minus 5. Now if you take a look at this, what I can do now is bring these two fractions together so I can have that single fraction. That's what my goal is, just to get a single fraction on one side and zero on the other side. Now what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description box on how to add rational expressions and subtract rational expressions just in case you need additional help on that. Now when I finally bring these together what I get is negative 6x and then I have negative 6 minus negative 10. Notice that negative sign needs to also go to that negative 10. So that's going to be negative 6 minus negative 10, which is going to give me positive 4. Over 3x minus 5 is less than 0. Finally, after all of that, I finally have the single fraction on the left-hand side, and then I have a 0 on the right-hand side. I have the form now I need to set my numerator equal to 0 and my denominator equal to 0 to see what values I get. Setting the numerator equal to 0, I need to move the 4, so I subtract it, and then I divide by negative 6. So I have negative 4 over negative 6, which is going to give me positive 2 over 3. I do the same thing with the denominator. I have 3x minus 5 equals 0. I move the 5 and then I divide by 3. I get 5 over 3. 
Next step is to place them on a number line in order. The 2 over 3 will go first, and the 5 over 3 will go second, because I want to put them in order. Now, which one do I include? Which one has a closed circle? Which one has an open circle? Notice for the 2 over 3, I'm putting a closed dot. And I'm putting a closed dot because my inequality is not strict. And then for the value that I found in the denominator, the 5 over 3 is going to have an open circle. Because as stated before, any value that you find in the denominator is not going to be included. At this point, I need to pick test points in order to test each one of my intervals. So for the first interval, I'm going to pick 0. For the next interval, I'm going to pick 1. And then for the last interval, I'm going to pick 10. And I'm going to my calculator to check this. And I'm actually going to check this area right here. Um, I'm going to check the area where I have 0 on the right-hand side because it makes it a little bit easier. When I plug in 0, I get a statement that is true, so I shade it. When I test 1, I get something that is not true. And then when I test 10 in my inequality, I get something that is true. So I shade that area. The last thing that I'm going to do here is put my solution, the part that's shaded, in interval notation. This is negative infinity to 2 over 3 with a bracket because I have a closed dot. And then union with 5 over 3 to infinity. And I put parentheses on both sides because I have an open circle. <laughs> okay. Hi guys. 